guys, Joel here from the Home Recording Network. Today, I just want to go over how I typically mic up a snare drum. And I find that a lot of people get a little bit too obsessive about things like mic placement when they're actually recording drums because I find that a little move in the mic doesn't really make that big of a difference. But today, I'm going to show how I typically like to place my mics when I'm recording a snare. And I'm going to show this on the top and the bottom. Um, the most important thing here is the mic. So I like to use the Shure SM57 on both the top and the bottom. And these are cheap microphones that have just been the industry standard for recording snares for a long time. So uh, I choose to go with these. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to mic up this snare and then I'll show you guys actually where the mics are placed on both the top and bottom and then we'll record some hits and we'll hop into the DAW and I'll show you some additional things you should be looking at when you're actually recording a snare drum. Okay so we have this snare drum mic'd up on both the top and the bottom. Now let me show you what I did here and I'll start with the top. So for the top snare mic I'll usually place it about an inch in from the edge of the snare and I like to place it at about a 45 degree angle kind of pointing towards the middle of the snare drum. Uh, the reason I do that is because I like a lot of low end in my snare so the more you point it towards the middle of the snare the more low end you're going to have. If you want a real nice snappy snare sound you can point it more towards the edge but you're going to have less low end. So what I usually do a rule of thumb for me is I like to be able to fit about three fingers in between the mic and the skin. I don't want this mic being too close to the skin. I want it being about three finger widths away from that skin. Now for the bottom it's actually pretty simple. We want it to just mimic that top snare mic. So again, it's just placed about an inch in from the edge of the snare. And again, I can fit about three fingers in between the skin and the mic. And it's at that 45 degree angle, just like the top mic. And uh, it's it basically set up the same, just underneath the snare drum. Okay, so now we have the snare all mic'd up. So I'm just going to record a couple hits and then we'll pop into the DAW and I'll show you a couple things you can do just to make sure your snare is sounding right and I'll even give you some tips on how to make them sound a bit better. So here we go. Okay, so now we have our snare top and bottom in our project. So the first thing we need to do is check to make sure that these two snare tracks are in phase because anything with two mics on it needs to be checked for phase cancellation. If these two tracks are not in phase, then the waveforms are going to be fighting, which means we're usually going to lose some low end from the track. Basically, this snare hit won't be as powerful as it is intended to be. And of course, we want our drum hits to be as powerful as possible. So how I typically check for phase cancellation is I will pan one track all the way to the left and one all the way to the right. And then I will put this BX meter on the master bus and what this BX meter has in it is this correlation meter. So every one of your DAWs should have a correlation meter. So what I will do next is I will play the track and make sure that this correlation meter isn't going towards the negative one. I want it to stay on the right side of this little line. So let's play the track in C. Okay, so we're in phase, so I put our pans back to the center, uh, but this is kind of unusual. I usually have to flip the phase on my snare mics almost all the time. So if you were out of phase, you could just put a plug-in 
that has a phase reversal on one of the tracks. So this one is the SSL channel strip. It's got this phase reverse button here. So if these two tracks were out of phase, I could just hit this and flip the phase on one of them and that should put our tracks in phase. Okay, so now some tips on getting our home recorded snares to sound better. So the biggest problem with snare drum is the ugly sound that's found around 500 hertz. So I'm just going to pull up this EQ and I have this one section set to about 500 hertz. So we should be able to get this snare sounding a lot better by dipping a large amount of this out. So let's do that. So that sounds a lot better. Here's before and here's after. Now to add some nice top end, we can usually add an 8K shelf. So let's do that. So now before and after. Now, if your snare needs some more low end, I find myself boosting somewhere from 160 hertz to about 200. So I have this set right at about 180, and we're going to do some boosting here just to give this snare a bit more low end. So there we go. Now let's play this before the EQ. And now after. Now we can go down to our bottom snare here, pull up an EQ, and we can brighten this bottom snare up to get some more of that snare sound, the rattle of the snare. So let's do an 8K shelf on this. Now, this bottom snare sounds like it needs to be tuned because we can hear that nasty sounding frequency coming after the hit. But we should have a decent sounding snare sound now. So let's just play these together. I'm going to lower down the bottom snare a little bit. So obviously we need to, you know, hear this snare with the rest of the drums and whatnot to really dig in deep and get a great sound. But this is the typical process for me when I'm, you know, miking up the snare drum uh, checking phase and getting it to sound a little bit nicer than it actually sounded when it was recorded. So I hope this helps you guys out. And I hope you guys can get some nice sounding drums from your home studios. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to download your free Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide. I made this for you guys so you could start getting your mixes sounding better. There's a lot of great information in there. And be sure to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mixes. Thanks.